first review, favorite album. Never mind. It's a classic. It's definitely, it touched my heart. It really got me into music as a whole. It really made me dug deep. Yeah, I really never cared about an artist as much until I got into this album. The number one album of 1991 is for Nirvana. They definitely found their sound. They knew what they were doing. They knew what they were getting into when they actually released this album. As I say definitely, I mean, someone's probably going to argue me, so, oh, you know, the Melvins. But I would say this is probably the biggest stepping stone of grunge as a whole. And the 90s. I mean, let's start off with like the first track, Smells Like Teen Spirit, became a whole anthem for a whole generation of kids, Generation X. This is when kids definitely, I guess, started growing middle fingers <laughs> and started throwing them at their parents. <clears throat> I mean, when you, th when you, smell, when you put on teen, Smells Like Teen Spirit, it's almost like your stereotypical song that you play really loud just to piss off your parents <laughs> in the house. When I first heard this, like right when I heard like the lyric, with the lights out, here we are now, Definitely Kurt just hit me with the head with a brick. It took me back. And then when we get, you know, in Bloom, when he's talking about how people, you know, they don't understand any of the lyrics that he says. All they care about is just how it sounds. Which is really what Grunge was criticizing the whole begin with. And then I would say Kurt took it a step back with the track Come As You Are. You know, because these first two tracks, you know, Smells Like Teen Spirit and In Bloom, they were hard hitting with very punk influence sounds but come as you are it was more like a soft rock i mean i don't know why anyone would even hate this album it's perfect <laughs> i mean it's a five star i mean everything is there lyrically musically it's all put together everything sounds perfect there's not one track on here i'd say that even remotely does not deserve to be on here now someone might say something in the way you know it's really slow it doesn't keep up with the pace but anything, I feel like it's a perfect ending to it. Because after all that angst and all that rage, you know, it's good to have a breather. I've listened to this record a million times. I I've, I feel like I've come up with my own little theory. A fan theory, I guess you can call it. <clears throat> about how, like, Smells Like Teen Spirit, it starts off, you know, you're a teenager, you're full of angst, you hate the world, you hate everything around you, you feel like no one understands you. And that song really speaks to kids who are like that. And then you get, you know, through in bloom, you know, puberty, hormones, you know, you're angry at this moment and then you're happy at this moment. You don't know why you're feeling all these emotions. And then come as you are, you just want people to accept you for who you are, not for any other reason, I guess. You know, I know you're probably thinking, you know, the Nirvana shirt, he has the messed up beanie, he has all this messy hair, then, you know, he should probably go out and get a haircut, right? He, he has his Nirvana record right here. You know, he just go out and buy a CD. Or just put it on his iPod, you know? You know, he probably gives all the demos. You know, like Beans, that track. He probably gives it a 5 out of 5. You know, would listen again. But you know what, though? Bet you're that guy at the coffee shop with the little portable record player, aren't you? You probably keep the needle in your back pocket. You don't care if it really stabs you. And you sit there with your little headphones listening to Blowfish in the puffer fish this is an amazing album like let's start off with like smells like teen spirit you know he's already he's already screaming at you yelling at you kind of like how i'm doing to you right now you know he feels like he's just banging my head in with a brick you know with the lights out here we are now those are just amazing lyrics that honestly speak to you next in bloom you know still pretty angst filled just toning it down just a little but just enough then we have come as you are very has a lot of melody to it um, very poetic perfect track and then we have breed which has a lot of punk influence which you know Kirk Cobain he was all about that which I appreciate he incorporates that into his music and then next we have lithium where he's talking about religion God how it affected him then we have Polly a song that Kirk Cobain got inspiration from when he heard about a little girl being raped which really just shows his big heart not not, not that he's you know a big angst filled guy but also he has a huge heart next we have territorial pissings the Smells Like Teen Spirit of the B-Side, perfect opener, full of angst, full of anger. And then the song Drain You, which is personally my favorite song on the whole album. Which, you know, I, would, I, would th I like to think it's Kurt Cobain's love song. But also, he likes to throw a lot of shock rock into it, which I can appreciate that. Next, we have Lounge Act, which is Kurt Cobain kind of going back to the whole love story thing. You know, friend zone deal, which you know, a lot of teens deal with that. Next, we have Stay Away. Which is then, you know, him attacking God again, you know, with the whole line, God is gay, which did stir up a lot of things. Next is on a plane, which to me, I feel like that's 
the weirdest track on this whole album because you know, it's really hard to define what he's trying to say because at one minute you think he's saying this thing and the next minute you think he's saying this thing you know because at some moments it seems like he has problems with his parents but then it seems like he almost has problems with himself not just his parents but kind of how he affects their relationship as well and then finally something in the way which is an infamous track that Kurt Cobain wrote during a time when he was homeless. He had nowhere to go. You know, you almost feel that sense of hopelessness that he did at that time. You feel like there's almost no direction to go. You really feel almost stranded in this track. Like you almost don't know what you're gonna do afterwards. So all in all, it's a perfect album. One that you should definitely have in your collection. If you don't already have it, go out right now and get it. If you haven't listened to it, I mean, just, just listen to YouTube. It's definitely gonna be there. 10 out of 10 would listen again. I'm your friendly neighborhood in country. Go that way, towards the wall. There's a thing right here in front of me. No, I can't go back.